Oh, sit down on my new seat. This is amazing. I've got such a great sense of achievement. It is solid. It is incredible. Oh, I'm so chuffed. Um, and do you know what? It's nearly half past six. It's I'm starving hungry. It's a time I'd normally call it at night, but I just have to keep going. What's next then? That piece, I guess. This is crazy. I like building things. It's been a great day today. I've got through quite a lot. I had Ellie with me this morning. She started grinding out the engine compartment ready so that we can prime and paint that. It gets looking all lovely, ready for the new engine. Uh, and then we went to the unit because I needed to cut some wood and it's much easier pulling out the full sheets of 18 mil by when they've got two people. We had to go home, take the dog for a walk and have some lunch. When I came here, I just didn't set the cameras up. I thought I'd just get cracking. And I've actually moped ahead quite a lot. This bench is in now. Um, it's still missing a center support, which will go in tomorrow. This is gonna be a pull-out bed. So I've drawn the slats on that I'm gonna cut out tomorrow as well. So we're gonna have some static slats and then some, there's gonna be another front on here that's gonna pull out and these slats are just gonna keep it in line. So it can double the width of the bed, essentially. There's gonna be some tricky bits I've got to deal with. The uh, edge piece there, that's gonna be a fun one to try and get in. I need to go to the unit and get more wood for that. But essentially, this is nearly there. But essentially, I should have, by the end of play tomorrow, set the support, backfill, and front piece, slats cut out, and I should be able to slide it away. This bright is light, my word. Yowza. Yeah, really pleased with that. I'm gonna go home for fajitas. Just having a little kip on our new bed. It's lovely, this. It's a great place to start. I'll do the other one. I'll do the other one. We've got a very exciting parcel. I'm going to open it. That's not how you do it. for your purchase. I don't think I can do this on my own. Oh, you got it. Oh, it's so tiny and cute. I love it. Why don't you talk us through it? What does it do? Is it just an oven? No, it's not just... Is it just an oven? <laughs> Please, not in this day and age. We actually have been... We have bought... <laughs> it's effectively called... An air glaze digital. You can whole roast, air roast, bake, air fry, broil, toast, bagel, warm, ferment, dehydrate, defrost, wings, cake, cookie, fries, pizza. You can basically do everything you can in an oven plus air frying. We wanted to try an air fryer because everyone's raving about it these days, but we didn't want an oven and an air fryer because space. Um, and we found this, this chap. We've gone for a domestic oven. So this is just your everyday pop it in a house oven because adding marine to anything makes it triple the price. Isn't that right, Lenny? Oh, no. <laughs> All right, I've got the sliding top down. I'm just gonna cut out the slats, but first I need to measure them. Yesterday I did put some in, I divided it into 11. But I think the gaps are going to be too big. They're about 130 mil. I just think that that's going to be a little bit uncomfortable. So I'm going to reduce the size of that slat down and hopefully create a more comfortable bed to sleep on. There we go. The slat space is a lot closer together now. So that should eliminate any small people falling through or people getting their pants caught and ripped off. You know, classic errors of slattage in beds. So essentially, I'm going to put another bit of ply here, which is going to sit in line with the top there, which is going to meet up with these slats, and then every other slat is going to stick to this piece. And when I pull this out, half the slats will come with it, forming a bed. Just cut up my last sheet of 18mm. 
on the workshop, I definitely under-ordered. I'm going to have to get some more at some point, which is really difficult because I don't have a vehicle big enough and delivery on wood is so expensive. But hey, that's something I'll figure out later. For now, I've got all wood I need, so we can crack on with this project. Let's go. So as expected, it doesn't fit perfectly. I've got it in, it's very close. It just needs a couple of mil shaving off this end. Okay. So that fits really well. What we're going to do now is cut out these slats and then once they're out we can attach the ones that are, so half of them will stay attached to this front piece, half of them will stay attached to the top piece. Shh. That's the plan anyway. I'm out. I've got any more 18mm left now so I better not screw this up. Right, before we move on to the Slats, I think I'm gonna skip ahead actually to do this center support. I think it'd be easier to line up the center port with the top piece without the slats cut off. Give me a break. So I've got it in a temporary place, just screwed in with the baton on the floor. And now I'm gonna put the top on and then see if the center runs down the middle here. If it doesn't, I can adjust it. Just a quick look at the Burnham sunset, obviously. Glorious, as always. next day and A and I spent most of the day on the boat. We've had a big design meeting. We've been chatting about what we think we need and it's been really useful because if I think I was on my own and I just went ahead with it, I think I'd have made loads of mistakes. So Ellie was able to call me out on a few things that didn't quite make sense and that's probably saved us a lot of time and money. What I'm gonna focus on now though is getting this piece of wood in. This is gonna be the back support for the sofa. We're going to use 12 mil ply. I've just put a full length in uh, going the long way down and I'm going to put a short piece in and then I'm just going to cut them together and then eventually I will mitre the edges so that they sit nice and that we can have a nice finish on them. I'm just throwing it together, putting screws in here and there just to see if it all fits. If we like the height and stuff, we might, we're thinking about dropping it down a, a few centimetres if we need to. Get your eyebrow. Then we're going to judge the comfiness scale and how we think it looks and everything like that. And then the beauty about not tabbing it in as we go is that we can just change it if we need to, which is super important for us because we don't know what we're doing. So let's crack on. When I was putting the side floor in on the starboard side, I ran the saw through it and it was a bit far away from the hull anyway, it wasn't great. So I completely replaced it. I've kept that piece of wood to see if it could come in handy again. And I think we can use it for the shelf that's gonna go above the seating on the long edge. It's already contoured, so I, I, it won't be right. I know it's gonna be off by quite a bit, but it'll really give us a good starting point and should be easier to scribe as it is, and then we can just go from there. But I'm really glad I kept it. It's gonna save us some wastage. The big cut I put into it, I'll just fill with thickened epoxy and paint over it, so you'll never know it's there. But that's, that could come in really handy. Quick bite of Ellie's sandwich. Oh, wow, look at that. 
What a power sandwich that is. Mm. So as you can probably see, as the seat back came up, if you've got two squares leaning back, they're not gonna meet properly. There's always gonna be a gap. So what I'm doing is I've measured that gap, 60 mil, I'm gonna cut a wonky line on that piece so that should the top will be longer than the bottom, so that should meet up and close that gap. Lovely job. Perfect fit. Just need to rip a line from there down there. Last night was a struggle. Ellie and I stayed up quite late discussing the sofa and although it is extremely practical and it serves three purposes it's our sofa it's a pull-out bed and it's the seat an extra seat for our nav table it just looks huge it is so big and bulky which is good for storage underneath but when you walk in it just absolutely dominates now we need to keep the seat backs are the same size because of that's the size of the cushions that we're going to need for the pull-out bed but it just sits really high we haven't really got as much shelf as we were hoping for so we're going to drop the whole thing 100 mil four inches lower just because just so we can get a little bit more shelf space and just so it doesn't feel like it's intruding on the entire space so that's my day i knew this would happen like this is always the whole reason i haven't tabbed it in and i haven't properly put it together you can see the slats already falling down is so that we have we can play with it and it's going to be little tightening up put things in see how they look and then have a go because even if we stuck this in like 3d software have a look you can't get the feel unless you're in it and you're sitting on it you just don't know like i just get completely swamped oh, i mean it's comfy don't get me wrong but it just takes up all of the space I think we can afford to drop it down a little bit. I've got the Six Nations on, so that's gonna keep me busy. As well as cutting down the whole sofa, which meant dismantling it and then reassembling it, it actually made such a big difference to the overall look. We still have so much storage, which is easily accessible and will so fabulously turn into a double bed for those cozy movie nights. This is the first of many builds to come, so stay tuned as we start the next chapter for Sailing Rum Punch. And if you want to see more, head over to our creator's wheelhouse where you can find more up-to-date content. See you soon.